there's going to be a day and a time when I'm not cold and sleeping on the floor. There's going to be a day when they do find my bag and I get all of that stuff back. There's going to be another flight, even if I wait 30 hours for it. Um, there's going to be a time where this isn't an issue. Uh, yeah, so I leave in a little over 12 hours and I haven't, <laughs> I haven't done any packing. So, well, I did lay it all out. It's here on my bed. Um, I just need to get all three months worth of my gear to fit in this one bag. Um, it's gonna, it's just gotta work, I don't know. Um, if I need to take something out, it will not be the chocolate. Um, it's my only stipulation. The lines are nice and strong and deep, and the feet lines good. So again, I would say you're probably someone who like takes charge and is clear and is do more in that forcefulness and decisiveness and like you want it, you know. So that's what that feet line means. Like, I'm gonna do it. I want it. Yeah. We have two little soulmate lines here. This one's clearer than the other one, but like they they originally were called marriage lines. With like any sort of like partnership or soulmate, there's the one and there's the other one. And again, this one looks clearer and a little bit more central in your life. This one maybe earlier on. Uh, so potentially that earlier one could have been like a deeper relationship, but still that the second one looks like it's going to be the one that has like a little oh. happy fork down in here. So this is the second, so the one that's slightly later is mm -hmm. more. Like flag, so there's oh. nothing really that I would be like, oh no, look out for this. I'm not seeing any like super quirky things, like it looks like pretty well balanced personality and everything like that. It's like a good good fire, good earth, good well balanced hands. So the thing is we're gonna be accommodating everybody with uh meal vouchers, with hotels. We're gonna try and rebook everybody, we're gonna try to get everybody a hotel. People, three, two, one, and back in the room. Because if he was hypnotized before, like, just so that we do in England. Oh, you've seen that too? Yeah, I've seen that. We're still fighting for a hotel, fighting for a suit in the morning. I'll raise the I still have not gotten my bag from Detroit, my checked bag. Do you know how I could get that? I had a phone number to call and no one answered. And well, you flew from Detroit to Boston? Yes. And you didn't collect your bag? They, it, they said it was still in Detroit. They checked the number and everything, but it never came. What airline was it? JetBlue. Did you go to JetBlue or? Uh, no. They it's a short me, word. They gave me a phone number and just told me to It's check. a 1 800 number? No, it was the gentleman that was working here. He gave me his card. Station manager? Yeah. So you, you tried calling him? I did. What is it? You know I, mean, I couldn't get a hold yet. If you have the time, I would walk over. There's a baggage office in Terminal C on the lower level. Terminal C? Yeah. Lower level. Seven minute walk. Okay. Uh, I can go with you in about 7 to 10 minutes if you want to wait. I'll show you where it is. Sure. 
probably better if you go talk to them in person. Okay, so this is Detroit, Boston, Boston, Manchester, Manchester, Valencia. So once your ticket gets exchanged, it actually, this and this will show, it'll go like kind of light and it'll say deleted and then the new parts will come in. Okay. So we scan all, our, all of our bags. So here how it says bin one, this was loaded and it was scanned once it actually was loaded in Detroit. So this bag came into Boston. So far, 10 out of 10. This is my line to try to be rebooked. So, I want to lock them. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, so I've made it to Oslo and my bag is still missing. I didn't make it to Manchester or here to Oslo. Um, so I'm not sure what to do about that, but right now I need to figure out the last few legs of my trip and read those. Okay, so all of the flights to Alta are booked for the rest of the day. All hotels in Oslo are booked. Um, so I'm trying one last thing. We'll see how it goes. All right, so I just purchased a new flight for Oslo to Alta tomorrow, because that was the earliest I could get a flight. And it turns out there are no hostels or hotels available in Oslo tonight. So I will again be sleeping at the airport. <laughs> I did have a nice conversation with a Norwegian woman today who suggested Tinder as a way for me to stay somewhere tonight that would be free. So, keep an open mind. Okay, I was just woken up by someone that apparently I cannot sleep here. It's about 3 a.m. And, uh... <sighs> yeah, so I'm gonna find somewhere else. Uh, it's okay though, the floor is cold there anyway. These ones were occupied, but now they're open. It's for me. A lot of people just pointing out that I still seem happy while all of this is going on. And I don't know, I guess that's just something I figured I could take a minute to talk about because <laughs> I guess it's, it's always been for years a surprise of mine when people get upset about things seemingly easily. Um, I don't know, to me when something like this happens <clears throat> or things like this happen I guess it's been one thing after another um, you can easily get upset I've been on planes with a lot of people getting upset with these delays or cancellations or missing bags um, or fire drills or you know whatever is going on um, but I don't know if you're <laughs> I don't I don't guess I don't see the point of being upset about any of it there's there's going to be a day and a time when I'm not cold and sleeping on the floor. There's going to be a day when they do find my bag and I get all of that stuff back. There's going to be another flight even if I wait 30 hours for it. Um, there's going to be a time where this isn't an issue and 
at that time I won't be upset so I don't know why I would choose to be upset now I might as well um, just enjoy everything else that's going well and the experience that I am having um, so yeah I would just encourage everyone else out there to do the same and especially for the sake of everyone that's just doing their job and happened to be working at the airport when your flight was canceled um, I don't, I don't know. It's not their fault, just give them a break. Okay, so I just bought what I think is a little thing of toothpaste and a little body wash, and we're about to get super and decent in a public bathroom. So I clearly should have stocked up in Manchester because food here is so expensive. I just bought this little Caesar salad and it was about $18. <laughs> so yeah, I might just be hungry until I come back to the US. I accidentally wandered into the international side of the airport even though it's a domestic flight. So they sent me out and I have to go back for security. So if I'm late, this one's on me. <laughs> Okay, I just made it, and I am pleased to announce my shower. I <laughs> shower, and that is the highlight of the day. <laughs> I was right, this is the best part of the day. <laughs> um, so yeah, in short, I'm here, I made it. I'm sure my bag will be here in a day or two. Well, I'm sure they'll find it within a day or two, and then I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere, the very northern tip of nowhere. So it'll probably take like a week to get here. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I can handle a week without my bag. Um, so yeah, I made it. Thanks for watching a little bit of my story. Um, if you guys want to see the rest of my trip in Norway, and after that, just go ahead and subscribe down below, and uh, yeah, I'll show you guys what it's like living up there. <laughs>